Welcome back, everybody. Let's continue to talk about conformity. This time, let's focus on why people conform. Conformity often gets a bad rap, but it's not always irrational. It's not always unreasonable. It's not always undesirable. And in fact, if you're unsure about something, such as how much a spot in a darkened room moves, then it probably is wise to seek information from other people. And in general, if many other people, several other people seem to agree, then we're likely to assume that they're right. They don't necessarily know any more than you know, and their guesses won't necessarily be any better than your guesses, but it's not unreasonable to seek out their advice. That's my point. So it's not surprising that we're often influenced by what they have to say. You know, so in other words, it's not surprising that we might conform to their way of thinking and behaving. Well, that's the basis for informational influence. Informational influence is motivated by a desire to be right, to have the correct and helpful information. In these situations, social influence leads to a specific type of conformity, what we call private conformity. It's also known as acceptance or conversion. And what makes it unique is that it results in a genuine change in our thoughts, our feelings, and our behaviors. So, for example, Sharif retested his subjects after his original study when his subjects were alone and away from any other type of group influence. And he found that their estimates of light movement continued to reflect the norm that was established in their group. So in other words, the subjects were genuinely influenced by their fellow group members, and really so much so that the subjects embraced the group's way of thinking and ultimately incorporated that way of thinking into their own thought processes. So as you can see, the influence of private conformity tends to be relatively long-lasting. So it's true that when we need information, other people can have quite an influence on us. But that doesn't mean that people can influence us to any degree that they choose, or in any circumstances in which we're unsure about something. Because keep in mind, our core beliefs and our core values will continue to keep most of us true to ourselves. And those core beliefs and those core values will generally protect us from excessive amounts of social influence. But that said, people who have a stronger sense of self compared to people who have a weaker sense of themselves, they're more likely to be better insulated from excessive social influence. Well, as we discovered from Ash's research on group pressure, conformity takes place even when we don't need other people to help us understand what's going on. Remember, when Ash's subjects were tested alone, they were able to find a comparison line that was equivalent to the standard line on 99% of the trials. So they were able to complete this task at a very high level. They were able to do it very well. But when subjects were in the presence of other people who provided incorrect judgments, remember then the subjects gave incorrect judgments about 37% of the time. So it's obvious that something other than informational influence explains this type of seemingly irrational conformity. Just take a look at this guy. This is a picture from Ash's original experiment. This guy clearly knows that the group was wrong because he's paying close attention to the task. Yet people in his situation showed considerable conformity. So what's going on in these situations? There's a different type of influence that we need to talk about. In order to understand that type of influence, we need to put things in perspective. Human beings have survived and flourished working cooperatively. That's an important thing to understand. We need relationships with people and with our peers. We feel that need to have successful, productive relationships today because we inherited that from our ancestors. They needed to have successful relationships in order to hunt successfully, in order to farm successfully, in order to come together and have a village that was safe to live in. And think about how life has evolved. In today's world, in order to accomplish great things, teams typically need to pull together their individual resources and work as a cohesive unit. Well, unlike informational influence, which is motivated by a desire for good information, normative influence is motivated by a desire to avoid the consequences of appearing deviant. Because when we appear deviant, we risk being disliked, ridiculed, and ostracized by others. And of course, none of that feels good. It leads to emotional distress, low self-esteem, anger, loneliness. So in many situations, we're simply motivated to get along with the group, to play nice with others. And it's in these situations that the group's social influence leads to public conformity. 
Unlike private conformity, which we talked about previously, which we call true acceptance, public conformity tends to result in relatively superficial behavioral changes, but not real, long-lasting changes in our thoughts and our feelings. So in other words, the subjects in Ash's study did not change their actual opinions regarding which were the correct comparison lines. This chart right here does a great job of summarizing the differences between informational influence and normative influence, and between private acceptance and public conformity. Well, that's it for this section, but stay tuned because there's more social psychology coming up soon. <laughs>